What's up? This is Miss Lee. We're out here with Skill Methods. What's up, guys? B-Boy Cloud, Skill Methods. Hi. <laughs> Abstract. <laughs> Motion. <laughs> you hear that okay? You guys get that? And look who's coming in. They just joined the party. Are you guys excited? You should be. It took 15 years to get outside for this interview. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's actually one thing we're asking the other guys. I mean, you guys, where do you guys live now? You guys don't live together anymore. LA, New York, uh, Florida. Florida. How did you guys get the name Skill Methods? Like, who came up with it? Uh, at first it was like, you know, Methods of Skill. And I was like, nah, you know what? Like, at the time for me, I was like, you know, we, should, we need something like a one or two names. Because to us, it was like Rock Steady or like other, other, other crews that had like two name type of uh, name. I was like, all right, you know what? Let me flip that skill methods, and I sound like an idiot right now. <laughs> that was the worst oh, explanation yeah. ever. Exactly. Well, what about your guys' names then? Like, I don't know. Where, like, who gave you your names, or where, how did you come um, with it? Strive gave me mine. Strive Miami. Strive gave me Strive, Strive, Strive. We did. You hear that? No, just kidding. No, not Strive. Not Strive. you guys. Strive. No, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was small, and I. My hat fell off, and then I looked like I looked like the character from Final Fantasy VII. Cloud. <laughs> I but, was wondering if it was that. Yeah, good. yeah, it was something like that, but it, it formed into a whole other like, meaning. It used to be Little Rock. Your name I used know. To be Little Rock? Before be we Little even Rock. knew, another, there was another Little Rock. Yeah. yeah, before we knew Little Rock. Where did you get Little Rock? I have no idea. I think it was me. Was it you? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he. he gave we'll me get to you guys there. in a second. <laughs> oh, what about you? Uh, my real name is Luis Efraín Rosado Montañez. Just kidding, no. no it, it's Luis, but um, I lived in, Ita in Italy till I was like seven. So Luigi, and my mom calls me Luigi, everyone calls me Luigi, so it's like it's just stuck. Do so you speak like Italian and everything? Fluently? But in my house we speak Spanish, so it's like, it's like the same. Well like all of you guys, you guys have like your own like style and everything, but you guys kind of have like a similar theme when you guys dance, like is there any kind of like, um, like what am I trying to say, like, like idea that you guys share like as far as like dancing and movement and like keep going because you guys never really have like, like you never start and then finish and then you seem to start again, you guys always continually, continually keep dancing. Is it, is it just habit? It's just, con just feel it and continue and never stop, that's what it is. Well the main, yeah the main challenge is to not think when you're dancing, so not think. That's the main thing that people always mistake and they mess up on. As soon as a thought is created in your head, you're like, you already made a decision to like, screw up or something like that. Something like that. <laughs> sort of like, like the Inception film. <laughs> nice uh, idea. So everybody has a different style and maybe the thing that people see that's like collective about all of us is just that we kind of because we dance together a lot. We dance together and we all operate on kind of that instinctual stuff. Instinctual like we came from a certain time period in a certain area and like collectively like came up with the same aesthetics of like what we thought was dope. So okay. I think that's what people see is like because everybody dances really different. I don't think any of us have, have the same of similar influences too. Yeah. That also makes I try to be like all of them. That's my style. <laughs> <laughs> like who was around that like when you guys were learning? Who were you guys learning from any other B-boys around you or were you guys like were there any old school B-boys or were there not very many B-boys in your area? We were, well, I mean with me and Flips when we first started it was like there was really nobody. Yeah, we were in Tampa Bay, like yeah, there was in nothing. Clearwater, Florida. That's like the retirement home. Honestly, like, it was uh, maybe videos of Radiotron, like with Jazzy J and, and Wicked, you know, uh, Renegades, and uh, Air Force. So we, that's, the, that's the only thing that, thing that we saw. And then we, when we met Cloud when he was young, and his brothers, they were, they were like, more advanced than us, you know? We were, like, bugging out, so. It's, yeah, and uh, I think that's a, a, um, another thing of, of you talking about how we found ourselves. I mean, I think, because nobody... When you have somebody that you look up to and you dance and you watch them dance, it's like you kind of want to be like them. You know what I mean? So you, your, your style automatically starts to form like them. And we didn't have much of that but, but ourselves, so we f were able to find ourselves within a dance. I don't know if that makes sense. Somehow. Did you, guys, did, did you guys think you were going to be at this point? Like, did you guys even think about it or did you guys just kind of like take going on with the flow? Just, I mean, to us and to me, like, I was like, I just want to get ill. 
that was the whole idea. Like, let's practice and just like, you know, like sometimes like we would give ourselves goals. Like on the first year, second year, third year, I should have this move or whatever. You know, it's meaning like the basic foundation of moves. And um, from there, it's just, you know, after a while going to different jams and vibing, you just like, I don't know, it just happened. We just. I remember, I remember thinking like, you know, when you're first starting off, you don't really have anything. And you're like, yo, when I get flares, I'm gonna be happy. You know what I mean? But it just escalates. After you get that, you, you know, you keep. What was the best like point that you got to that you were like, I got that? Like, what was? What was the point? Was there a point that you were just like waiting with Oh yeah. When I started getting like combinations that I don't do anymore, <laughs> like Flare 90 Flare and <laughs> Flare 90. <laughs> Cherry right here, the little, the little oh, cherry right here that burns. Was that always like, you always see like random b boys with like the spot right here from oh, them my, practicing. And also with my my hand went like this. Oh my god. Oh what? That was awesome. This is the best example that we could come up with that I could come up with. It was uh, I saw it like you know when Wu Tang came out. It was like everybody had their own thing, but they were like, boom. That's the way we feel. You know what I'm saying? So that's why the methods came from that too. Came out with like a bang. So I, you know, <laughs> he's joking. He just likes to mess with us. <laughs> <laughs> like when you guys get in your like, because everybody has that point when they're dancing and they just feel like they're like plateauing, like, or they're like in a slump. Like, what do you guys do? Because you guys have been dancing a long time, so I'm sure you guys are. Yeah. Like, it, it happens, but it happens to all of us. So when it happens, it's like. You just gotta keep going. You'll, you'll get out of it. You start and if you, the other way, the yeah. opposite way. <laughs> you start doing. You learn whatever, everything this way. You learn this way. Exactly. Whatever you don't have, you start working on that. What kind of influence do you have that like aren't in that isn't b-boying? Do you guys have any other things that like that inspire you besides like b-boying? So, uh, honestly, uh, anything, anything, uh, animals, <laughs> <laughs> animals, deer. Animals. Nah, I just like di di different different music, rock music, eerie music, anything that's strange. I feel like I know for me, ninjas. Nah, you can create to other than breaks and hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Uh, anything, anything that's inspirational. Fucking the universe that we can't even fucking explain. You know what I'm saying? It's like how can you explain breaking? You really can't. You try to with words, but you really can't. And uh, that's just the way I see it. You know? It's like I feel like we're the aliens of this earth and shit. You know? The physical training element is like, I mean, you can tap into all sorts of other worlds in terms of flexibility, conditioning, blah, blah, blah. But like, that's that's pretty like fundamental and easy to access. I mean, anyone can log online and find out how to get in shape or fitness and stuff. I think like the the deeper inspirational things are like emotional, intellectual, and like spiritual. That's where like, that's where the root of the majority of your dancing is gonna come from. It's not gonna come from like, and that, for me, that's why I don't really get inspired as much by breaking anymore, because it's like so oversaturated visually. It's like anybody can plug in at any time and see everything. So it's like, it's not like you're gonna find anything there that's gonna like make you feel something inside. Really, for me, I don't know. But uh, so like mainly through our our interactions and our activities. Like it could be through film, it could be through design, it could be through all sorts of stuff. History, you know what I mean? You could dig through history and look at like the progression of all sorts of crazy things. Like when I first started, I was really into DJing and scratch DJing. So we looked at like what Qbert and those guys were doing and the X-Men and what those guys were doing and how like, they were changing the art of manipulating records. And like I drew a lot of inspiration from the way they kind of went about. So there's like, there's so many different things to feed into. And I think like it'd probably be good for a lot of b-boys nowadays to draw inspiration from like their own cultural roots or their own family history you know what i mean and like kind of like dig inside and find out what kind of stuff can happen you know rather than like looking at what's out there and what's validated and what will like kind of get them you know because there's so much to show still there's still so much to be inspired from and in the origins of this dance that's where they got their stuff they got it from you know their family history a lot of those steps have family roots you know so it'd be cool to see more of that like people finding digging around especially with like such a pool of talent nowadays yeah what do you guys think about the scene nowadays is is it changed like a lot since you've been there or do you see like a pattern going on it's bigger it's more like i mean internationally i think it's more bigger than anything you know I mean? like overseas is like way more appreciated you know? We're about to go to IBE right now too, so it's like that. That's a really big jam, you know. Like, like a couple it's, days, it's yeah. huge. Like and it's in Holland. Like it's crazy to think. The one thing I I want to ask mainly is like, 
As far as like one thing that you guys could tell any b-boys or b-girls or anything as like a tip or inspiration or whatever, there's like one thing that you wanted to tell somebody to help them out, what would you tell them? Uh, yeah, I mean it's the same thing I tell everybody is to always, it's always dance from your heart. Like, I know it sounds cheesy or not, but it's true. Like, if, if you have fun and you dance to express yourself and to find yourself and to share with everybody else, it's just gonna spread. Like, us as a dancer, will bring out the dancer and somebody else who doesn't even know it's there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it has to, like, you have to dance from here and project it out. And without any expectations or, or, or any judgmental thoughts of, of anybody, but, you know? To me, it's more like, you know, ask yourself, why are you dancing? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's the real reason? Don't do it for the wrong reason, you know, for, you know, I don't know, I know people say that this dance was built on battling, but there comes a time where things do evolve, and you know, sometimes there should be some positive positiveness in the dance too. So within our, like we're talking about creating, I think we create out of positiveness and both negative too, if that made any sense. Not to be redundant just on the topic of dancing, but maybe of what like it means to be a crew. Like I think it's really important that crews try to work together and stay together and like sure it's about dancing but really it's about growing up like growing up and like I mean we, we were kids together and we're men now you know what I mean like we know each other's children and we all have interactions with each other's lives and our families you know so we truly are a family like we've been together for 15 years so that's like a really powerful awesome thing and like it's really cool that, that breaking is a means that can provide that but I think a lot of people should just remember to focus on those elements and like traveling is dope and Touring is fun and getting, you know, and breaking is great, but like at the end of the day, like there's this core unity that it provides as well. That's where the whole crew thing comes from. That's really important. I think people, are, you know, should, should hold on to that and protect that. Don't ever stop dancing, you know? Like, however you came to like dance or like however you stumbled upon the dance, you know, like it's, it's not like not anybody could just break, you know what I mean? So it's like, I think it's a hard dance too. So it's like, if you, if you happen to, you know, start breaking and stuff, just don't ever stop, you know, even if it's to, for yourself, you know, like, because it's just like physically hard and everything, like, a lot of people quit after a certain amount of times, they just give up, just don't ever stop, because it's rare, you know, it's like something, something hard and something like very special, especially for me, like, it's just like, it's the only thing I do is, it's what I love to do, you know what I mean, so it's like, just don't, don't stop, man, because it's, it's like, the illest form of dancing I think there is, you know, so if you happen to, happen to do it, just, just keep it, keep it going. You know what I mean? Dope. I'm gonna, I'm gonna co-sign all of that. I'm just totally feeling all that. Um, like, I've seen people come and go. I mean, people that, that I looked up to, that were around my scene, you know, come and go. And they were better than me, you know. And I'm, and I, like, I, I look at how many years I put into it, and now, like, damn, all the experiences that I've had, I'm like, wow, you know, those people, damn, what happened to them? You know, you know, maybe they didn't have the love for it or whatever the case may be, but. Um, ultimately just like the ultimate search of freedom you know like like escaping the matrix you know you'll know it when you feel it when you're dancing when you escape the matrix you'll feel it you know when you're dancing like for you for you're free you know you're like nothing else matters around you, you know that's the ultimate to me like when whatever confidence and like the person you discover through the dance that doesn't just have to stay on the dance floor that same attitude that you take toward dancing and self-discovery and the way that people conduct themselves and are passionate about their dance, conjure that and you know, raise your family with the same authority. Treat people with respect with the same authority. Pursue education and knowledge with the same authority, you know what I mean? This dance is empowering, but not only within the circle of the dance floor. Take that, through that you're getting self-discovery and like b-boys need to take that into other areas of their life so that they can succeed and be passionate about living in all elements of this world, not just the dance floor. And I think that's something you don't see a lot of days. Like, a lot of b-boys will be like the kings in the cypher and like so confident and passionate about one thing and then on the side they'll just be doing something senseless or something that just makes no sense. It's like carry that, the architecture of that design that you created, that brain and heart and the other elements of your life. You know what I mean? I think that's important. That's too much for you. Just say it, son. Okay, well, that's Kill Methods. You guys want to give any quick shout outs real quick? Shout out to everybody, uh, to my crew. I love y'all, man. The ones that were not here, love y'all, miss y'all. Uh, I don't know, the whole world, man. Just keep it up. All right. Peace. Florida, Mind 180, Bigs and Baddest, uh, everyone back home. My two brothers, uh, Def 1, Aaron 1. Yes. Yes, your parents, my family. Shout out to Jay Lepke, who passed away. 
uh, B-Boy, my cousin at close. Everybody knew him. And I'm thinking about him now, so I'll say his name, Jay Lepke, we love you. Oh yeah, and for, for Ted Neat for putting together this jam. Yes. Okay, come here, come here. Yo, there's like five seconds of tape, show them your chest. Shit. Oh <laughs> shit. Know your real chest. Okay. Peace, thank you everybody, we love y'all, we hope to see y'all soon. Keep rocking, take it to the top, y'all, one love. Oh, no, man. That was amazing, event. Thanks, Ted. Yeah. yeah.